Okay, I've got a fantastic game for you. Uh, this one's pretty awesome. Uh, I, I, we're playing this from Bozic's perspective, international master from Serbia, born in 1960. Uh, so he's like my dad's age, basically, just a couple years younger than my dad, facing Lou Malyi across the board. And I wanted to kind of see what it felt like to face Lou Malyi, you know. And I've often thought of it as maybe facing a dragon across a chessboard. She's just going to devour you. But in this game, she's more like a boa constrictor, just squeezing her victim to death very quickly, though. This is a fairly quick death for a boa constrictor. Anyway, let's go ahead and uh, get into the game. Bozik starts with pawn to c4. So we have the English. Lou Malli responds with pawn to e5. And we have knight to c3 by Bozik. All, of course, book moves. These have been played hundreds of thousands of times. Lou Malli now plays knight to c6. Definitely a solid move. We now have knight to g3 by the Serbian master. And now pawn to f4 played here. And uh, this is somewhat of a rare move in the position. So up until this point, there's been more than 10,000 games in the chess.com database that have played this position, but as of this move, we're down to just a couple hundred, well, 700 or so. And most of the other games, so more than 90% of them, knight to f6 was played instead, but let's go ahead and continue. This is a solid move, though. This is a book move. This is known to be a good way to play. Um, it's just a bit rare. And now we have pawn to d3 by the master, and Lu Maoyi now does develop the knight to that fantastic square f6. I mean, these are these are just well placed knights in the opening. If you don't know, uh, yeah, they can attack the center of the board. They're just very active. That's where you like to have your knights if you can get away with it. Continu continuing on, we have pawn to g3 by the master, and this looks like something that I would play. Um, I often like, whoops, and, um, so I'll play. This is called a reverse Sicilian, by the way. So this is a reverse Sicilian. Um, as you know, in the Sicilian, normally we have pawn to c5 early on, um, usually the first move in the Sicilian, and they have their pawn on e4. Uh, but instead, we have the pawn on e5 and the pawn on c4. It's a reverse Sicilian. Um, and I like this move because, uh, yeah, you perhaps can bring your bishop to g2 here, and it's like a reverse Sicilian dragon. Or I would like it to be called the snow dragon. If I ever smash Magnus Carlsen with it, um, it'll have to be called the snow dragon. But I guess I would probably have to smash Magnus Carlsen, the world champion, first. So that may not happen. Uh, continuing on, we have bishop to b4 by Lu Maoyi. The dragon on the other side of the chessboard. Yeah, the master plays what seems like a reasonable move. I would probably play this a lot of times. It's like, what are you going to do there, you know, uh, bishop, uh, pawn to a3 here. Are you going to really trade your bishop for a knight? In most cases, you don't do that. But in this case, Lu Maoyi does. And uh, Stockfish believes this is the strongest move in the position. Um, and we'll probably see why here. So, of course, uh, so bishop captures on c3, and then we have b captures to c3. So Bozik's pawn structure is a little messed up, but is this a bad thing? He has an extra pawn that he can kind of throw at the center, perhaps. It might be good. We have castles by Lu Maoyi, and now we have bishop coming to g2. And, yeah, again, this looking like something I've played before. Um, like I said, I would, I would call it the snow dragon if... Uh, if I was able to win with it, uh, which Bozik will not do here. This is uh, this game's almost over already. It's hard to believe, but it's close. So we now have pawn to uh, d6 here by the boa constrictor. So she's going to squeeze this poor old man to death. And now we have castles. Everything looks quiet. It doesn't look like this game could be nearly over. It's kind of crazy. Um, yeah. It's all good. And, and this game at this point has been played, this position has been played in seven other games. So this is this has all happened before in master play. Lu Maoyi now moves her queen to e8, kind of an innocuous move. Doesn't look like anything dangerous is going on there. Uh, be nice to be able to get your queen into the game with some sort of tempo, but this doesn't do it. Now we have knight to d2 here, and a very rare move in the position. So at this point, we only have 10 games that went down this line. In, in the other chess games, instead, um, rook e1 was tried, 
We had pawn to e3 was also tried and bishop to g5. But let's continue with what actually happened on the chessboard. We have knight to d2 by the Serbian master. And now Lu Yi plays pawn to f4, uh, just continuing her attack. And, and she's, uh, you know, notorious for being an attacker with pawns. She really pushes those pawns out of there, sometimes before developing her pieces, although she's fairly well developed here. And now we have knight to e4 uh, by the Serbian master. And it is as of this move, uh, we are on move 11, that we have a brand new game. This has never happened before in master play. And in, in the other um, game, there was one other game where pawn to e3 was played. And in that game, uh, it was a draw. So pawn to e3 was a draw. We played knight to e4. And uh, <laughs> and this is, you know, this is a fine move as far as it, it says it's a good move. But uh, um, this game is not going to be a draw. We have knight captures on e4. The, ta the attack begins. This is the best move in the position. And we have bishop captures on e4. Of course, the best move. You don't want to mess up your pawn structure needlessly by capturing with the pawn. So it continues. And of course, the best move now, Lu Yi developing that bishop. I mean, this is, the, this is the way you want to develop your pieces if you can. Uh, <laughs> just like getting it out there and forcing your opponent to make a move, you know, and so just getting it out with a tempo. Of course, the rook has to be repositioned. This is the only move to be played. Rook to e1 is all the master could possibly do. And now the best move in the position is a pretty obscure. Uh, Lu Maoyi finds it. She, I guess she's uh, like wary of any kind of checking moves. She uh, She moves her king to h8 and the computer says this is the absolute best move in the position so she knew when to make the best move she she puts pressure on the position and then since she's got some time she gets her king nice and safe and now we have pawn to e3 by white which is a mistake he, he should have actually tried to get his king over to h1 suggests the engine so the engine says pawn to e3 is a mistake. Should have played king to h1. We're not going to go into that just now. We've got some other stuff we want to look at. And now we have the best move in the position by Lu Maoyi. Um, maybe you want to pause your video and think about it if you'd like to see if you can find this brilliant move as judged by the computer. But hopefully you've paused if that's what you'd like to do. If you're just here to enjoy the game, um, the, the move was pawn to f3 here. Just imprisoning the poor old man's king I and mean, he's like he just where is he gonna go he's he's got the enemy troops are surrounding his his castle here this is not good so now we do see the uh the master brings his rook to b1 trying to get him into the game uh he needs to get somebody over there to help his poor king uh unfortunately the center of the board is still pretty locked up we've got the very closed position here and uh, how is he going to make that happen? It is possible. Lu Yi now plays bishop to g2. And now the master does blunder. He plays rook captures pawn here. He, he should not have done that. He should have instead captured this, this knight here on c6. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and take a, a journey into that variation. So instead, the Serbian master should have just captured this knight here. So bishop captures on c6. We'd have queen captures on c6, kind of distracting the queen away from the attack on the king side here. Uh, you know, this is the best way to play it for black. And now rook could jump up to b4. And then best for black would be just to go ahead and attack that rook. So pawn to a5. We then have rook to uh, a4 here by white, best way to play. Queen back to continue the attack. Queen goes to uh, d7. And now white should push the pawn, uh, kind of sacrificing the pawn uh, by pushing pawn to, to uh, c5 and giving the, the rook the ability to come defend his king. Uh, this, this is what should have happened um, on the board, but did not. So we're going to go ahead and go back to what actually did happen on the board now. So instead, the Serbian master blunders, grabbing the pawn, neglecting to get 
some, somebody over there to help his king. And uh, this is a fatal flaw in why this game is so short. We have queen now to h5 by Lu Maoyi. And it actually would have been better to play queen to d7 here. And we're going to look into why that is. So this is a defensible position for the master. So the reason this was a mistake is the master could play bishop captures knight once again. We have queen to h3 by black would be best. Now queen <laughs> sacrifices herself on e2 is the best white can play. Of course, pawn captures queen. Bishop captures bishop. Now queen back to f5 would be best for black. And the rook could pick up the pawn. Yeah, the queen can come over here and, and grab the pawn here. But this... Uh, this would be a defensible position. If white would have played this way, he would have been able to survive. It's pretty hard to see that you got to sacrifice your queen in such a way to survive the game. So we won't blame this uh, Serbian master for missing it. Let's just go ahead and go back to what actually happened on the, on the chessboard. So instead, the Serbian master made a mistake. He played pawn to d4 here. Again, just failing to bring anybody to save his king. We now have the best move in the position for Lu Mao Yi. Uh, maybe pause your video and uh, think about it if you want. So uh, Lu Mao Yi plays this move and the master resigns. This gentleman's been an international master for 14 years. And uh, after Lu Mao Yi plays this next move, he just resigns. So hopefully you've paused your video if you want to think about it. But he, Lu Mao Yi just simply plays rook to f6. And yeah. The gentleman resigns the game and you might be thinking well there must be some way to defend well yeah uh, you could defend this position but you're going to end up being down uh, substantial like more than a queen we're going to go ahead and take a look at that variation now this is the way the game ended so lu Maoyi did win this game in just 17 moves a brutal brutal smackdown here that's just crushing somebody you, you cr crushed a master Playing, you were playing the black pieces and you crushed a master of chess. <sighs> like a boa constrictor. Anyway, let's look into that variation now. Kind of how, how you could defend. So the only way to defend against checkmate would be to play queen captures f3. Just sacrificing the queen right away. Of course, bishop would capture on f3. We have bishop captures bishop. And now they can play queen captures bishop. And um, yeah, I mean, this is a really difficult position to defend. You, you have to bring your, your rook over here to defend checkmate right now. Uh, and then, or well, I guess you could also bring your rook back here, but uh, your pieces are completely tied up. This bishop is basically useless um, and you're down a queen. You're down a full queen, so. I mean, normally I kind of uh, don't appreciate how masters and grandmasters will, will resign so early in the game, but this makes sense. There was just nothing to be done. This game was over. He, he had been suffocated. The poor old man, he could barely breathe. She was just wrapped around him like a boa, like a boa constrictor. Anyway, thank you for joining me for that. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, please subscribe. Hit that like button. Um, I will be making many more of game reviews of many of more of Lou Maoyi's games as well as other rising stars. Please let me know if there's another chess master you would like me to cover or perhaps a young uh, star who is maybe not yet master but has been kind of storming the scene. Anyway, I also teach chess classes so if you uh, ch look, check me out on Patreon, I do in-person and group classes. Um, anyway, yeah, thank you for joining me. Bye-bye.